Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to quickly discuss what is constant returns of scale. Uh, this, the target audience for this is like an intro or intermediate macroeconomics course. So returns of scale is also covered in um, microeconomics with like returns of scale for firm production. Uh, I don't think they call it returns of scale for the utility function, but they kind of cover it in there as well. Um, so yeah, once again, the target is more for constant returns of scale for macroeconomics, where constant returns of scale is a kind of an underlying assumption for many of the models that you use, like the solo model and the kind of classical model and the model of an open economy, it's kind of an underlying assumption. So it's nice to know basics of what it is. So I'll discuss what constant returns of scale is, and then I'll take a couple example production functions that happen to be constant returns of scale and show you how they are constant returns of scale. Um, and hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Okay, so in order to discuss what constant returns of scale is, sometimes called CRS, let's start off with what returns of scale is. So returns of scale refers to how much output changes. So Y is labeled output, sometimes production, sometimes real incomes, sometimes GDP, usually output. How output changes, given a proportional change in all the inputs, and I'll get to exactly what that means in a second, uh, where all those inputs change by the same factor. I find that confusing, so let's kind of go over it all again. Let's go over it all a couple times, but let's go over it all again. So by returns, we're talking about how much output changes. So how does Y change? Given a change in scale, where scale is you keep all of those factors, you know, capital and labor, changed by the same proportional amount. Okay, usually people stare at me blankly when I try to define it that way. So let's do a quick example. This production function is a parameterized Cobb Douglas production function, uh, and I have it set up here. So we're going to call that initial level of output, y sub naught. And you can see there's a certain amount of capital, certain amount of labor. So now let's suppose, given this, let's say that we've doubled the inputs. So I'm going to call this a new level output, y sub 1, and I've doubled capital and I've doubled labor. So applying that doubling of capital, I need to put it at 2k there, and doubling labor, I have a 2l there. So I doubled capital, doubled labor. Um, how does that level of output relate to this level of output. You know, I've doubled capital and labor, does that mean I've doubled output? Or by doubling capital and labor, does that mean I've more than doubled initial output? Or if by doubling capital and labor, is that less than doubling initial output? And down here, I kind of gave hints as to the definitions of each, and we're going to focus on constant. So uh, let's show that this is constant returns of scale. So the next step I'm going to do is just distribute the twos, the one in front of k and the one in front of l. So by removing the two in front of k, I can pull it out to the front, and that's a two raised to the 0 0.3. And then I'm going to pull out that two in front of l, which is raised to the 0 0.7. And I have a two, oops, two raised to the 0 0.7 times a k to the one third, sorry, k to the 0 0.3 times l to the 0.7. First off, note that a times k to the 0.3 times l to the 0.7, that's exactly what this term is here. Just have to have a couple parentheses to confuse you, but this term is exactly equal to this term. And that term is exactly equal to initial level of output. So let's plug that in. You know, I'm just plugging in things that are exactly equivalent. The other thing to note is 2 raised to the 0.3 times 2 raised to the 0.7. Whenever the term here uh, is the same, we could just combine exponents by adding them. So I'm going to have a 0.3 plus 0.7. So that's going to allow me to add these two terms in front. 0.3 times 0.7 is 1, right? 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, 0.1. And then 2 raised to the 1 is just 2. So by doubling the inputs, so our new level of output is equal to 2 times the initial level of output. So by doubling the inputs, we've doubled initial output. So this is exactly constant returns of scale. Awesome. OK, constant returns of scale. The other options uh, could be uh, decreasing returns of scale. Decreasing returns of scale is where we, were, for example, were to double the input, we less than double the output. Increasing returns of scale refers to when we double the inputs, we more than double the output. The other thing to note 
is um, sometimes you'll be asked to solve this slightly differently. Rather than giving this like doubling number, you'll be asked to have some kind of scaling factor. So I'm going to do another example where I have that scaling factor. So you have output is equal to a function of the factor inputs, capital labor. You know, you can also have more, but we usually keep it pretty simple. Uh, and that is equal to this. So this is a Cobb Douglas production function with constant returns of scale. You have A, which isn't an input or factor, it's just a level of technology. Um, a lot of times you'll just see that um, simplified to one, and so it disappears. But I'll keep it in just for the sake. First factor is capital. Capital is raised to the alpha. So the capital share of income is going to be whatever that alpha is. And then L is raised to the one minus alpha. Um, so yeah, let's show that this is constant returns of scale. So starting off at that level of production, what level of production is it if we were to increase capital and labor by some scaling factor? So Z. So you know the example up here I gave, I just doubled capital and labor. Imagine you were to change it by any number whatsoever. So it could be I change it by, I have it, you know, so Z is 0.5. Uh, you know, let's say I triple capital labor. You know, Z is just any number. Um, sometimes you'll see it as uh, omega in some textbooks or classes. Don't be afraid, same thing, it's just a scaling factor. People sometimes just choose to use different notation. So by doubling capital labor, I need to double capital. I need to double labor. Sorry, not double labor, I'm increasing it by the scaling factor Z. So I've increased capital labor by Z, and now I'm gonna, yeah, that's what I did there. So the next step is we need to distribute Z. So the first one in front of capital is Z raised to the alpha. So I have a Z raised to the alpha. And then the next one is a Z raised to the one minus alpha. So I'm gonna put that in, Z raised to the one minus alpha. Uh, and I pulled out all of the Z's. So note that A times K to the alpha times L to the one minus alpha is exactly this, our initial level of production. So I'm gonna plug that in. And then once again, we have the same term. So if we wanna combine the exponents when they're multiplied together, we just add those exponents together. So one minus alpha, and I do plus one minus alpha. So what's alpha plus one minus alpha? Well, alpha minus alpha is zero. So I can just remove those. You have z raised to the one. And what's z raised to the one? z raised to the one is just z. So once again, we see we have constant returns of scale because we've increased the inputs by some proportional amount. That's the same for all the inputs. So remember that definition up here. Given a constant proportional change in all the factors, so the constant proportional change in all the factors is Z. We have increased our initial level of production by that amount that we've changed the inputs. So Z times that initial level. So we know this is constant return to scale. The other thing is, in macro courses, you're going to see a lot of these Cobb Douglas production functions. So you got you have technology. Technology is just a number that's often put to one. To, make, to go disappear, but think of it some level of technology. Um, capital raised to the alpha, one minus alpha. So remember the simplifying step where it was alpha, sorry, z times alpha, sorry, z to the alpha times z to the one minus alpha, how that perfectly simplified down to just z. You'll notice that that's pretty consistent. So by choosing alpha for the, the capital share of income above capital here, and by choosing one minus whatever that number was for the exponent above L, you'll always get this nice, clean, constant returns to scale whenever you see this. So if you have those factor inputs, you know, so in this case, we just have capital and labor, and if those exponents sum together to be one, which we've designed it to do here, and when we chose up over here, notice that K is to the 0.3, L is to the 0 0.7, 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 sums to 1. So when those exponents sum to 1, you're going to have a constant returns of scale production function. So I could have just actually looked at this step right here and seen that the exponents sum to 1, and so we have the exponents of all the factors, capital labor, sum to 1, and so I know it's constant returns of scale. 
awesome. So that's that. Uh, you can feel free. That's kind of all you need to know for constant return to scale. But just as an added aid, I uh, found this Wolfram Alpha thing. That's pretty cool. So let me show you. Let me set it up. So that first example I had was k to the 0.3, l to the 0.7. So you can see here k to the 0.4. So I'm going to lower that down to k to the 0.3. And then it was L to the 0.7. So L to the 0.7. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, close enough. Close enough right there. Okay. So what is this? On this axis, so like the height is um, production, the amount of production. So that's Y. Along this axis is labor. So the amount of labor, and you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, quantity of labor. So that's the amount of labor here. And then along this axis is capital. So going off that way is capital. So given any combination of capital and labor, it tells you how much production there is. And so I've set it so that it's uh, k to the 0.3 times l to the 0.7, you know, slightly. It's k to the, technically it's k to the 0.29 times l to the 718, but that's close enough for me. So what happens here, if I could get it just perfect, I don't think I'll be able to. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay. So this level of production that I'm kind of circling around right now, that level of production is associated with um, five labor and five capital. And I'm going over to that level of production, and I see it's about, it's about, I'm going to say it's about five but maybe 5.1 or something like that. So five labor, five capital leads to maybe 5.1 production. Let's say we're, we were to double labor and capital. So this point over here is 10 labor, 10 capital. And you can see I have twice as much production, exactly twice as much. And this line right here, where I've selected the, um, the parameters for our Kopnogis production function is exactly constant returns of scale where you double the inputs, you know, 5 to 10, you double the output. So uh, as examples, you can see this is increasing returns of scale. So when you start off at this level of production, if you double the inputs, you get more than double the out level of production. And then decreasing returns of scale, you have about, you know, it's more or less 5, um, capital 5 labor gets that level of production. You've doubled it up here, you get definitely less than double that initial level of production. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks and have a good day. If you found the video helpful, if you wouldn't mind clicking like, that's it.